prepare to step aboard a true icon of British rail innovation. The Class 91, the sleek, high-speed locomotives that dominated the East Coast mainline for over 30 years. With their futuristic design and engineering excellence, they weren't just locomotives, they were a statement, a testament to British Rail's ambition to deliver cutting-edge technology, even under the constraints of a shrinking budget. These 140 mile per hour marvels, coupled with their Mark IV coaches, redefined the Flying Scotsman route between London King's Cross and Edinburgh in the 1990s. Speed, comfort and style. This was rail travel reimagined. But the Class 91s were more than just machines. They were the backbone of a vital corridor, embodying an era of transformation in British rail. The Class 91s owe their existence to one of the most ambitious undertakings in British rail history. The electrification of the East Coast Main Line, spanning London, Leeds, York, Newcastle and Edinburgh. This vital artery had seen a long journey to modernisation. In the 1950s, electrification was proposed, but shelved due to high costs and government resistance. Instead, the iconic Deltics and later the high-speed trains took over, delivering record-breaking speeds and reliability. By the 1980s, however, it was clear that the future lay in electrification. British Rail needed a new locomotive, something fast, powerful and innovative. Enter the Class 91, a lightweight streamlined masterpiece capable of 140 miles per hour, paired with state-of-the-art Mark IV coaches and a driving van trailer for push-pull operation. The Class 91 represented a leap forward in locomotive design. With a 6,480 horsepower engine, these machines were twice as powerful as the legendary Deltics. Engineers employed cutting-edge features, including body-mounted motors to reduce wear on the tracks, advanced electronic controls for smoother operation, a streamlined cab at one end and a flat, blunt cab at the other, ensuring versatility for freight or passenger use. This innovation wasn't just about speed, it was about creating a train for the future. The Mark IV coaches were even designed to accommodate a tilting mechanism for higher speeds, though this feature was never implemented. On February 12, 1988, the first Class 91 rolled out of crew works, coinciding with electrification progress along the East Coast Main Line. Despite some early teething troubles with electronics, the Class 91s proved their worth during extensive testing. By 1989, they were smashing records with 91 110 Northern Rock hitting a breathtaking 162 miles per hour, making it Britain's fastest locomotive. When the Intercity 225 sets officially entered service in 1991, they quickly became the pride of the East Coast, handling over 1,000 miles per weekday and setting a new standard for British rail. The Class 91s were no strangers to challenges. Their early years saw reliability issues with electronics, but upgrades in the late 1990s under GNER transformed them into one of the UK's most dependable locomotives. However, their legacy is also marked by tragedy. The Hatfield derailment in 2000 and the Great Heck crash in 2001 shook the rail industry, leading to major overhauls in infrastructure and safety protocols. Despite these setbacks, the Class 91s remained steadfast, proving their resilience time and again. Privatisation and the introduction of the Azuma trains, Class 800s, signalled the beginning of the end for the Class 91s. Yet, their story isn't over. Today, LNER continues to operate a reduced fleet, with some locomotives proudly wearing a modernised version of the Intercity Swallow livery a nod to their heritage. One Class 91 has even found a home at the Museum of Scottish Railways, ensuring that future generations can marvel at this engineering marvel. The Class 91s weren't just locomotives, they were a symbol of British Rail's final stand for innovation. For over three decades, 
they carried millions of passengers across one of the UK's most vital rail corridors. Their combination of speed, power and groundbreaking design leaves behind a legacy that will not be forgotten.